Brokers Alliance and the National Insurance Clearinghouse present the Business Insurance Zone, a Bravo video event. Broadcasting in HD 1080p on Vimeo, YouTube, the Insurance News Net, Agent Navigator, BrokersAlliance.com, and on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and the Insurance Forum. And now your host, the Wiz of the Biz, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that spotlights insurance in your practice. Keeps you up to speed on insurance news and products. Features insurance strategies from top advisors. Get in the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. Well, our email address is the biz at brokersalliance.com and you can call me at 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for any of your quotes on life insurance, DI, LTC, annuities, or group pension plans. And remember everyone, I'm not a tax or legal advisor, so if you hear anything on our show, please feel free to check with your CPA and your attorney, and of course with your broker dealer, compliance department. Today, we're specializing in a whole idea that's a concept that we all have, we're all, most of, most of us are licensed for, but we're not really taking advantage of it, and it's called disability insurance. But we don't call it disability insurance on this show anymore. We call it paycheck protection. And with that, I want to introduce our head of our division of disability and nationally recognized disability expert, Marcy Pruitt. Welcome to the show, Marcy. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, you are the diva of disability. <laughs> That's right. All that is disability is Marcy. And if you want to talk to her, if you hear her, you say, boy, I really think she knows what she's talking about, you'll be able to write her at marcy at brokersalliance.com or call her toll free 1-800-290-7226, her extension 126. Well, Marcy, we have a lot of brokers, a lot of advisors that do a great job in life insurance, annuities, big planning tactics like estate planning, business succession planning, retirement planning. But when it comes to DI, it's kind of a lost art and I'm always asked, what can we do to make our practice distinctive? And I always say, things like sell something distinctive. And when I think of that, I think of paycheck protection, better known as DI in our business. Give us a little introduction into DI. What's it all about? Kind of, kind of take the myth out of it. Well, it is as simple as paycheck protection, Steve. The, truly the cornerstone to sound financial planning is protecting your income. And so many advisors are placing other products, like you mentioned, but without an income, you have no financial plan. So the importance of making sure that you are laying that foundation and protecting the income that makes everything else you do possible, it's really as simple as that. I'm thinking if people aren't doing this, if advisors are not selling disability, maybe we think it's just too difficult a concept. There's a lot of definitions, there's a lot of legalese, a ton of writers, I mean, you really have to kind of know this product and so forth. It seems like a lot. I think what we're going to try to do in several of the shows that I have had you on before and so forth, and if you want to see some of uh, Marcy's teaching, which we have posted out, basic entry level on disability, you can go out to agentnavigator.com. You can come to our archive. We'll hold it on our on-demand section. You can watch some of the basic entry issues to kind of get your feet wet. And this show is kind of expanding on those kind of educational uh, videos so that you can kind of expand your practice with us. We're going to try to unbundle it in a couple of shows here and just try to really uh, put DI, paycheck protection, front and center of your practice. Because again, we're all looking for marketing anomalies, distinction that separates us out of the pack. I think DI could be that. Well, it can be, and we really want to simplify it. Most agents and advisors, again, are not uh, promoting it or talking about it with their clients because of the fear of the unknown. They don't want to look bad if they don't understand all mm -hmm. the definitions. So for us to you know, decipher it and demystify it and really make it as easy as possible to understand and provide that support to help them sell this with their clients. Well, when I'm looking at the statistics, I mean, I'm kind of amazed some of these statistics. Like... I would not have thought, honestly, that a 25-year-old would have any kind of numbers as far as what's the possibility, a chance of becoming disabled at 25. I mean, when I was 25, I just remember I, I was a crazy guy. I probably was not not very mature at the time. 44% probability of becoming disabled. Now, I'm sorry, but that stat shocks me. Well, look at all the extreme sports and things that people do today and, mm -hmm. and travel and whatnot. I mean, and absolutely, that's not even counting the illnesses and all the other issues that can happen. When I'm looking at these numbers, now, of course, it gr starts to grade up as you get older. Interesting enough, around 45, 
it starts to drop, there's this probability, it starts to drop a little more. I guess as we get older, we get a little <laughs> more mature, right? And so right around the 55, and let's just, uh, for most of our agents who are baby boomers, members of the ARP nation, this is your, your probability. You're probably going down about 27%. That's your per percentage. You're probably going to have a disability. Now, I had a disability years ago. Uh, Marcy, I didn't know if you knew that. I tore my left Achilles tendon off in a tennis match. And I was down for nine months because at that time, the medical technology, you know, I, I was an athletic person. I didn't right. see it coming. I'm playing tennis, a non-contact sport. But out of nowhere, I tore my Achilles tendon off and I was down for nine months and I got a disability check every single month. And if I didn't have that, I would have burned through my 90 day savings, which we're all supposed to at least park. Now I think we should be talking six months, maybe a year, right? right. But when I'm looking at this, if a person's disabled one year and that person is, let's say, 55 again, he's going to be out. It's 81% of the time. This, he's going to be down for over a year now. So I'm looking at statistics that we have compiled. And what are the chances if the dis disability has lasted three months, how long will it go on? And you know what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of them are short-term in nature, two to four years. Um, statistically, if you're out for five years, you probably are out for most of your working career. Uh, however, you know, we don't have the crystal ball. How long will we be disabled and, you know, for how? So it, policies typically are sold to age 67. A lot of people say, I'll just take Social Security. If I become disabled, I'll just do Social Security. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Well, Social Security has a very strict definition. You, uh, it's a five-month waiting period. You do have, to, you need to be unable to work in any capacity, and/or expected to die. And uh, seventy percent. No ONOC here. Yeah, no, no. ONOC. Okay. Close to seventy percent of the claims are mm -hmm. denied at first blush, and then mm -hmm. there's an appeal process. But it can take a long time. I mean, there's a backlog, and it's a, a very tough to collect on Social Security. When I think of clients trying to protect their earning ability, I generally punt to life insurance. You know, if I'm not there, I want my family to be protected. Pretty easy concept. But I don't think we're thinking in the multidimensional way of planning in the bigger picture, which is the odds of you dying. In fact, I think, I, I think it's still true. Less than 2% of all term life insurance ends in a claim, right? Part of it is replacement, part of it's lapse. But a lot of people just don't die. So if we have a high, high longevity, you know, our mortality, we're living longer. Right, right. I'm looking at paycheck protection as being now a whole nother area. To It's reinvented itself. I mean, it's really not the same DI I came into business with 25 years ago. And, and that's true. The, uh, you know, it's insurance is a risk. We all plan for those risks. And, you know, you have a plan if, and your plan may be you're not doing anything with it. But if you become disabled and lose that paycheck, a whole lot more goes into it than when you die and you're not around to see the fallout. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, you know, living death. How do I bring this up in a client? Like, let's say I'm in a first contact scenario. Well, let, let's, let me back it up. Let's do a, a client that we already have. So, so he's comfortable. We've already had a couple of transactions together. Mm -hmm. We've done some planning together. Now they hear our, our show. They hear you discuss this. How would they introduce paycheck protection? Well, there's a lot of ways to cross sell and, and it costs about six times more to find a new client than to cross sell your existing clients, by the way, as well. And the closing rate is much higher with an existing mm -hmm. client. So in today's market, it certainly makes sense. Um, the it, the cross selling from whether it's health insurance, it's life insurance, you know, I mean, the mm -hmm. cliche, OK, you know, life insurance, you know, you had a heart attack. It didn't go far enough. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. what happens? So um really just the fact that you're half covered whether mm -hmm. you have the health insurance and you and you know we're looking at higher deductibles today and hsas mm -hmm. and five thousand ten thousand dollar deductibles well if you're able to meet that high of a deductible it's likely that you have some condition that may also disable you mm -hmm. so um life insurance the same it, the statistics as you mentioned earlier or on another show what percentage of people die during that tidy term period they mm -hmm. buy life insurance for well it's uh, less than two percent it's a very low ratio versus the uh, the statistically chance of you becoming disabled during your working careers mm -hmm. when i'm looking at kind of introducing our audience our advisors today to disability and i love the 
us kind of knocking it down to retail language using the word paycheck protection. Right. I want to protect my ability to earn. I want my family, my ideals, my concepts of my kids getting educated. And with as many daughters as I have, I have to plan for weddings, you know, right. and the cost of those weddings. So all in, we have to make sure our bills are being met. And this is one of the greatest neglected areas of planning. And yet I have sophisticated registered investment advisors that listen to our show and have no DI in any of their clients' plans. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but that just shocks me. Right. And these are very good advisors that really understand full-blown financial planning. Part of financial planning is indemnification. Indemnification usually is, well, I'll do life, maybe even long-term care. But I think DI is the forgotten insurance. And how can that be when it's really pay tech, pr paycheck protection? Well, and most advisors simply do not talk about it. And you know, the easiest way to bring it up, as you just asked, is if you were sick or hurt and could not work, would you still need a paycheck? You know, where's the I, money going to come a, from? I would need a paycheck, right. of course. So where will that money come from? Uh, I'll have to burn through my savings account. You know, and how much and how long will that last? Uh, for most people, 90 to 120 days, if, if the stats are right. Right, exactly. So that's and you know the policy design to design something affordable. Uh, as you mentioned, a lot of policies are unbundled to just design something. Even if it is a short-term two- or five-year benefit period, You know, that's better than mm -hmm. nothing. If, if we have to, probably I would use the word almost, where we're introducing, we're opening as a gatekeeper to indemnification centers, we're opening up areas of client protection, indemnification. I mean, this is an insurance show. You know, we're trying to get our advisors to think through how can I market, how can I penetrate, how can I cross sell. I think DI could be the new way in, to be honest with you. Well, coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk about the underwriting aspects of disability and certainly not like life insurance, I'll tell you that. Remember, you can write me at the biz at brokersalliance.com or call me 1-800-290-7226. My extension is 147. Marcy's is 126. When we come back, we'll talk more about underwriting. I'm Steve Savant. You're listening to the Business Insurance Zone, a show that focuses on insurance in your practice. We'll be right back after the break. Steve Savant here. For years, I've heard that less than 2% of all term life insurance ends in a claim. That's not many, and clients had to die to receive the benefits. That's the old term insurance. Now start selling the new term insurance. The term insurance that covers your client through a chronic illness, a catastrophic event, or a terminal diagnosis and pays their monthly premium during extended periods of unemployment. What term life insurance can do all that? Western Reserve Alliance Advantage Term with Living Benefits. No other term insurance product bundles so many solutions to life's unexpected problems. And all in one policy. So for more information, call Brokers Alliance 1-800-290-7226. Stop selling the old term. Start selling the new. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance in your practice. I'm Steve Savant, your host, financial color commentator, and interviewer extraordinaire. And I'm with Marcy Pruitt. Marcy's the head of our disability here at Brokers Alliance. If you want to talk to her, go ahead and call her 1-800-290-7226, her extension 126, or write her direct, marcy at brokersalliance.com. Well, Marcy, we're talking about DI today. We introduced it in the first segment. I'm thinking morbidity underwriting, which is disability, is going to be different than mortality underwriting, which is life insurance. Am I there? Absolutely. We'll talk a little about it. It's, do we have to pee in a bottle and draw blood? Uh, we tip, You do, actually, Steve. Okay. Um, I just wanted to know. Well, and a number of carriers have actually loosened up the underwriting. If you apply for, say, under 5000 a month, and that varies carrier by carrier, three to 5000 they will waive the 
medical requirements, the uh, paramed blood and urinalysis. So they really mm -hmm. are trying to simplify it for the lower indemnity amounts. Now, are they still asking for attending physician statements then too, or no? If you qualify for these simplified programs, they want the intent is to waive all of that. They mm -hmm. waive the personal history phone calls. They, so right, are, there they, are, are, are they visiting the MIB? Well, they'll do a MIB and or a script check. Uh -huh. So those are the key questions. When's the last time you saw a doctor and what medications are you on? That's mm -hmm. going to give you a lot of information about mm -hmm. your client. You need to do the field underwriting so you're not blindsided mm -hmm. when the application comes in. You know, we get their preferred healthy non-smoker ultra rated life insurance mm -hmm. and declined for disability. Yeah. yeah, that's so hard because everybody goes, Steve, I just took the life exam. I'm super preferred, right? Right, And then they go, I just took my DA and I got deep sixed. What happened? <laughs> I mean, the underwriting and the way they look at it is so entirely different. Well, and a lot of conditions will not kill you today mm -hmm. with medical technology. It, people are living a mm -hmm. lot longer with medications and, and treatment. And well, when you talk about typical them. medications, let's just talk about that for a second. So if I'm on hypertension or high blood pressure and it's managed, right? Is that a problem, or it depends how much you're taking, or is that a, is that a knockout? Uh, that's typically okay, and it's not something where it's automatically, you know, leads to stroke or something. So uh -huh. if it's controlled, the records show you're a good patient, you take your medicine, you check it, you, you routinely see your physician, then that's okay. It's insulin, it's diabetics, mm -hmm. it's um, anxiety drugs and a lot of things, sleep apnea, some of the big ones mm -hmm. we see that restless leg syndrome. Every time you turn on the TV, there's a new drug out there for something. Those are the ones that w so mm -hmm. many people are on and they, they are a concern. Well, when I think of underwriting and I don't go through simplified issue, I have to go through the normal exams, the collection of the APSs. And if I've had prior injuries, how much does that play into this? Well, if it's, it can be excluded. So, mm -hmm. um, I would say 70% or 65 to 70% of the policies are issued as applied for. 10 to 12% mm -hmm. are declined, and the difference is rated, ride. Actually, I, I, I correct that. 50 some percent of the policies are issued as, as applied mm -hmm. because the you know 20 some percent or higher are rated, ridered, modified ex with exclusions. Mm -hmm. And they can address that condition. For example, you're going to a chiropractor, you're going to have a back exclusion. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, and that, and if you had other prior medical conditions, then they can simply exclude them. If you wanted to do routine, pre, kind of pre qualify a client for DI, do you have paperwork that could, you, if we went through a kind of a battery of questions, do you have something like that? Well, we do. Uh, many carriers have a trial app, but with mm -hmm. HIPAA now, we really need to still sign off and to, for a carrier to mm -hmm. even review an attending physician statement. Um, another you know, most people, you can call MIB, the Medical Information Bureau, and a very quick phone interview with personal information, they will mail you your report. And mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great way for somebody to, for an agent to go ahead and know mm -hmm. exactly what's coded to MIB. And the client has history. to sign the HIPAA release for that. Well, right? no, because it's a phone call. So, and so is the client calling? Or the, the client's going to need to call, call. Okay. with social and date of birth. Right. And so if, if, I'm just trying to think if there's, if, if I don't get it as applied for, then is there a lot of not taken then? Um, you know, we try to work around that. That's again, goes back to field underwriting. If the mm -hmm. agent does a good job and prepare them for that, it's do okay. Do we have any kind of a form that'll help them prepare for that? Do you kind of have a? Absolutely. Okay, and so if they want to write you and ask for the form, they can do it? Sure. Okay, again, Marcy at brokersalliance.com is Marcy her email. Marcy with a Y. Marcy with a Y. <laughs> good thing you said that, because there's guys out there, most guys can't spell, so. <laughs> And of course, you can always call our 1-800-290-7226, extension 126. Well, when I'm thinking about prepping for underwriting, it sounds like I'm going to have to, if I'm going to not go through simplified or guaranteed I get, or group, I'm going to have to go fully underwritten. I'm going to have to watch my, what am I saying? You know, if I went to the chiropractor just to have an adjustment, are they going to have a problem with just an adjustment? Or mm -hmm. no, you went there because your back was out. Well, again, um, if you're seeking treatment, then that is a condition that you could go out and claim mm -hmm. for immediately. So the mm -hmm. carrier to protect themselves will go ahead and exclude that mm -hmm. in most situations. And anytime the, and the value of taking a rated or rider policy is 
it, take it. You're, if, you're, if your condition worsens, the policy can't be taken away. If your mm -hmm. condition improves, the carrier can lift that modification. There's usually a review period. Well, there's a lot of planning tactics because I want to speak to not only individuals, but I might want to speak to execs, employers, right. key men, key women. It depends upon what, what scenario we're in. And our strategies and tactics to employ and deploy indemnification centers like disability are so huge that a lot of us are, are so, we don't even know how to pre-qualify a client. So that's why underwriting up front, if mm -hmm. we can kind of get an idea of what's up front. So you have a form. If anybody wants to call in, they can order it, and you'll send it to them. And that'll kind of walk them through what's really what we're looking for. Right, exactly. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, and of course, remember, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney, nor am I a CPA. And again, if you have any tax advice or anything like that, go ahead and talk to those fiduciaries, your CPA and tax attorney. And if you're with a broker dealer, please feel free to run anything we say on this show through your compliance officer so you can use it. But I'm, I'm thinking about a tactical way of how much I, I've heard 2 3% is what you really need to set aside to pay for DI premium to protect 97% of your income. Is that a fair ratio? Well, to protect 60%. So it takes about 2 2.5% of your gross earnings to protect 60%. It could be higher if it's business or Owner. Right. And okay, we'll talk about that in, the, in, okay. a, in a sh another show. But I just want to make sure. So it's only a, it's only a couple points here to protect about 60% of and your it, income. And it really breaks down to less than a cup of coffee a day. I mean, percentage-wise to, mm -hmm. to ensure your income. And that 60% mark is typically carriers place that if you are healthy working and paying taxes, what do you bring home? They mm -hmm. want to insure you for about that mark or a little less so you have a motivation and incentive to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the medical underwriting, um, we may touch on this as well, that's really easy to uncover. The financial underwriting is the, is the difficulty today that carriers really want to be sure what mm -hmm. you are claiming with the IRS mm -hmm. and, you know, what you are insuring. Mm -hmm. So a 1040 is a necessary issue Absolutely. of underwriting. But, but pretty much if you're a W-2 employee – Right, you can just show them your W two, or do they want to? No, they want a, your ten forty. You can usually show a W two if you've been a W two for several years. Many mm -hmm. carriers will accept that. Again, it depends what you're applying for. If you're sure. a doctor that happens to be a W two and you want fifteen thousand a month, they're still going to want to see a tax return. Mm -hmm. But again, the silver bullet, how to dodge all this, is a guarantee issue. And when you work with a common employer and a program is offered either on a voluntary or mm -hmm. an employer provided basis. The financial and medical underwriting can be entirely waived, mm -hmm. and that's a case by case situation. But there is, there, you know, that's the way to write individual disability so, so if you if, have that market. If if we can, if our employer has the ability to do a group, and they're still individual plans, they're not group mm -hmm. as a, a what we think of true group long term mm -hmm. disability, where the employer would be the master policy holder and each employee is mm -hmm. a certificate holder. This would still be individually mm -hmm. owned, permanent, portable plans, exactly like you would sell to one individual, but mm -hmm. you're selling it to multiple individuals within an employer. So underwriting, if I knew I was going to have maybe a problem, and I didn't really want to worry about the exclusion issues or so forth, the, the, uh, an employer plan might be the way to go. Right, yeah. Okay. When I'm looking at it, we, we, we know we have several carriers. You know, do, Have you seen one carrier a little more benevolent than the other when it comes to underwriting DI? Strictly on the physiology side. Absolutely. Some are, you know, there's price, you know, price product and service and pick two or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's sometimes a disconnect between sales and underwriting. So, you know, each carrier has their sweet spots of mm -hmm. health conditions, working out of the home, risk tolerance for I mean, we carry occupations. A lot of, we, we carry a lot of DI. Give me your number one you think is that they're just pretty much benevolent. I know that there's different areas, but is there one that stands out to you? Said, but they're, they're pretty good about it. Uh, a couple, yeah, there's a couple of carriers. Uh, principal and standard both are, are mm -hmm. very aggressive. Um, great definitions, good pricing, good mm -hmm. in underwriting. And those uh, on a regular basis, is there anybody that you kind of go to when you have a specific um, you know, disease or vocation. You really just want me to give you a carrier names here. Well, of course we do. This is the show. This is a wholesale internet show on insurance, and we are a tell-all show. Yeah, the, it, uh, it depends on the condition, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, like you said, let's do um, let's do a bad boy issue like type 2 diabetes, adult Well, when onset. you get into impaired risk, then mm -hmm. you're really going to be looking at your Fidelity, your mm -hmm. Lloyds of London. They Lloyds are of London? impaired risk wow. carriers. Uh, more so than your traditional white-collar marketplace. 
and then we have some that are very conservative um, you know that squeaky clean white collar top uh, classes and otherwise then mm -hmm. you know step down when you see underwriting from an owner occupation we're going to talk about that in another show that whole own oc issue because there's a definition issue we're now we're talking about the physiology sides of these issues and the financial qualifications but i'm always looking at own oc is like is that underwritten differently then i mean I, i'm just having my regular occupation now i might have a specific occupation do i have different medical and or financial requirements for that no if that by op class if you are eligible to purchase that rider then the limits are the same so in underwriting it's really by age and benefit amount so the older the i am i'm just assuming i have to pay more like all insurances in regard to this pay more but also mm -hmm. the underwriting requirements is somebody very young would not need even you know like we mentioned would not necessarily need mm -hmm. the blood and and the paramed exam but over 50 for example you male and everything. female cost the same or no no females are much higher female are much higher well in life insurance of course females are always cheaper but in medical and di and long-term care go to the doctor. and not only do they go to the doctor i just want to say before i go to break they live longer <laughs> <laughs> i want to thank marcy for being on our show today disability quote just call 1-800-290-7226 her extension is 126. Her email is marcy at brokersalliance.com. Don't forget to hop out to our website, www.brokersalliance.com for all your quotes on life, DI, LTC, annuities, and of course, group pension plans. I'm Steve Savant. You're listening to the Business Insurance Zone. That's the buzz on the biz for today. Get into the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. This has been a Bravo video event of the National Insurance Clearinghouse and Brokers Alliance, one of the largest distributors of insurance products and services to a nationwide network of insurance professionals. You can contact Brokers Alliance at brokersalliance.com or 1-800-290-7226, extension 147.